What is up guys, Wrestling Premiere is here. Okay, uh, I'm kind of busy with other stuff, and I didn't want to leave you guys without a video. Plus, I was actually going to make this last month, but chose Maven instead. Personally, I like making these lower card wrestling videos because not many on YouTube seem to give a damn about them. I do see some stuff on other channels often, and they interest me, but it's only occasional, you know what I mean? My opinion on this gimmick is just there, you know? I do appreciate the dumb characters because that's what makes wrestling special, but they always have a ceiling above them. They're always lower card stars. Simon Dean in particular was much more famous for being Nova in ECW. He was a talented wrestler in the sense that he can wrestle. He was always having good matches on the undercard, and to this day, many consider him to be one of the most underrated wrestlers from ECW. He was famous for being a part of the Blue World Order, you know, Hollywood Nova. I'll eventually dive into their story, but this video is about Simon D. Now, how did Nova make it to the WWE? Well, in 2002, he was signed to a developmental deal and was sent down to Ohio Valley Wrestling, and down in Louisville, his first night, he beat the prototype for the promotions world title. He was defending the title and facing the likes of Rey Mysterio, Christian, Eddie Guerrero. He was a solid guy in the ring, but unfortunately he was always being passed up in favor of others. You know, John Cena, Lance Cage, Sean O'Hare, all those guys were called up for the main roster before him. That is until one meeting with Vince McMahon. So he meets up with the boss of the company and he pitches him this fitness character because he knew about Ico Pro and McMahon's liking towards fitness and exercise and all that stuff. Before he knew it, he's on the main roster. He was behind everything for that character, you know. He was behind the infomercials, he was behind whatever he was doing in those infomercials, everything. Initially, the character, in his eyes, he wanted to be called Sonny Slay, but they opted to give him the name of Simon Dean, which was actually Dean Malenko's name, you know, Dean Simon. Anyways, on the September 13th, 2004 episode of Raw, Simon Dean made his debut. It was this rude fitness instructor that was promoting his product, you know, the Simon system. Actually, I screwed up, I'm sorry, it's the patented Simon system. Funny enough, the number he was promoting for his product was actually legit, and if you called the number, you'd get this little message from him, he'd be saying some random stuff. This trend of insulting overweight people and promoting his patented product continued over the next couple of weeks until the November 1st episode. Lillian Garcia on that night billed him as one of Raw's new sponsors, and so he's out here being full of himself, you know, the fans boo, he's insulting them, saying stuff such as, you can't even see your own penis, overall a douche. He told some guy, are your mom and dad cousins, and he was eager to whoop Simon's ass, and so he decided, no, security he let him in. He lets him into the ring. The guy was interested in the Simon system, so the fitness instructor asks him to take his shirt off. He does and the body shaming begins. The guy gets irritated and shoves him, so Simon Dean decides to school him with a takedown and chokes him out. The commentary team tried to sell it as something that wasn't planned, and he did this again the following week, but this time to a woman. And yeah, overall, the guy was gaining heat. The fans absolutely loathed this man. Somebody from the roster actually did something about this guy's mischief the following week. Rosie was the one who had enough and was about to do something about it. Simon claimed he wasn't talking about Rosie because he insulted a couple of guys backstage. He's like, those guys are fat or whatever. Before backtracking on those claims and straight up called him fat. He attacked with a protein bar, but Dean quickly got himself out of the tricky situation to a chorus of boos. He also made an enemy out of the hurricane and this led to his first match on Raw. By the way, this was the December 6, 2004 episode. He put in a solid performance and dominated for the most part, yet had to cheat to win. He ended up officially signing the contract the following week, and from here on, Dean became the ultimate jobber. He continued insulting the fans of whatever city Raw was in, makes mentions of their beaches or whatever, ends up getting his ass kicked, and it's the next segment. That's it. But hey, at least Kane was spotted holding one of his products, right? Sure, he may have hated it, and sure, he whooped his ass, but still. Then Maven joined him and promoted the Simon system, and the only difference this time around is that they were both getting their asses beaten together. It was a good thing for both guys, but as we all know, all good things must come to an end, right? Maven ended up getting released and Simon became Nova for a month. The whole JBL Blue Meanie thing that if you watch YouTube, I'm pretty sure you know about it, occurred. And that's a whole other story. I don't know if I'll even cover that in the future. I'm not even sure. Anyways, in his official SmackDown debut, Simon Dean managed to piss off Chris Benoit saying stuff like he doesn't know the inside of a gym. And I'm here thinking to myself, huh? Benoit doesn't know the inside of a gym. He got his ass destroyed easily, and the most memorable moment, in well, my eyes, to come from a SmackDown run was when he met Batista. First of all, Simon began coming out on a damn segue. He claimed that Batista uses all of his products, and as a result of this, he's become bigger, faster, and stronger, but the patented system doesn't cover his intelligence. You know, Batista's stupid. And so he's talking a lot when Batista finally appears. He ended up drinking the product. Claims that he feels bigger, stronger, and best of all, he felt more aggressive. You guys know the rest, but hey, at least Batista actually liked it, right? He was drinking a couple of those during the match. Soon enough, he was actually involved in a feud. 
Three weeks later on SmackDown, Simon came out to the ring to announce that he's ready to challenge anybody. He was so damn pumped up and the opponent ended up being Bobby Lashley. He's clearly pissing himself, but what was there to do? He asked for the match in the beginning. Even though he attempted some of those dumb lower card heel cheap shots, Lashley was unstoppable. Nova did have some fight in him, but Bobby had some ridiculous strength to him and he was victorious. Seeing as he hates winning, Dean made a challenge to Lashley for no mercy. Of course, he had to hand him the pet and a drink. He politely declined the protein drink and ended up tossing one over the top row, but yeah. The match at No Mercy had a very daunting stipulation to it. Simon was so confident that he's winning that he'll eat 20 double cheeseburgers. He lost, of course, and Bobby's like, eat up. This was the equivalent of me watching Backlash 2018 three times. That's basically it. He didn't want any of the extra carbs, but promised to do so, so yeah. That's exactly what happened. He ate the burgers. They're showing these segments throughout the show, and by the end, he had to barf. He ate 19 cheeseburgers, I should mention. From here on, Simon Dean was SmackDown's resident jobber. Matt Hardy took the L for him. Boogeyman took the L for him. And then he began managing this team by the name of Gemini. They were basically the great, great, great value version of Goldberg and Stone Cold Steve Austin. And I'm just here thinking to myself, he probably discovered them on Wish or something. There wasn't much there with the guys. They were pretty older in their late 30s. One of them even got injured later on. And plus, we didn't know much about them. They were just some big guys that destroyed everyone. And they were being pushed, but not hard enough to facilitate being champs. The team was thrown back to developmental, and Simon Dean slowly began working in the back. His final televised match came on the July 28, 2006 episode of SmackDown, when he took the L for Vito. The reason why he disappeared was because he became head of talent development. You know, DSW, Deep South Wrestling, and OVW, Ohio Valley Wrestling. He replaced Tommy Dreamer, who was uh, taking care of ECW. Simon Dean was also considered as a replacement to Taz for commentary, and it was so, so damn close to happening. Then JBL retired, and they went for him. As head of talent, he suggested that they hire the likes of Kofi Kingston, Sheamus, Cesaro. And by the way, Cesaro was let go a couple of weeks or months later by Johnny Ace. Natalia, you know, starts with the early 10s. But Simon really struggled with the politics, you know. Guys he was previously buddies with were hating at him despite taking a pay cut and working 80 to 90 hours a week. Worse yet, he had to fire people. It was very stressful for the guy. And yeah, he just didn't like the experience. In August of 2007, New York Times released a list of WWE guys who were clients of Signature Pharmacy. Simon Dean's name was on that list. He claims that a wrestler got him in contact with a doctor and he had a prescription. And I couldn't find an exact time as to when he purchased him, but many believe WWE saw him as a scapegoat and released him. He doesn't believe that though. Dean ended up becoming a mortgage broker shortly afterwards and seems to be doing good nowadays. So yeah, that's his run. Uh, he was just a job around, so you can't really say much. His character, there's some entertaining moments, I'm not gonna lie. Some moments were entertaining. He wasn't boring. I feel like they could have done more with the character. I'm not saying like mid card or anything like that. I'm just saying like they could have done more with the character. Could have done some stupid stuff. I mean, they did do stupid stuff, but they could have done more stupid stuff with him, so yeah. Or he could have been called up to the main roster as just Nova and compete in the Cruiserweight division, possibly. I guess they just weren't interested in that at all. Uh, he never really had any standout matches. The standout segments to me are the Batista one and the Bobby Lashley burger thing, that's all. Other than that, yeah, he didn't have any standout matches. His matches always lasted less than five minutes, and he was a mainstay on Velocity. He might have had something decent on Velocity, but I can't seem to think of anything from there, so yeah. What do you guys think of Simon Dean? Please comment down below. And that's your first video. Make sure you hit the Nova like drop on the like button, and perhaps the Simonizer on the subscribe button. Peace, I'm out.